All right. All right, guys, we got it fixed. Uh, I used a different device. There we go. Now we got everybody coming on. Uh, I used a different device. I used my iPad tonight, not my phone. And I accidentally had the, uh, the, the comments restricted on that. So good evening, guys. Thank you for joining me. Again, um, I'm Ricky Scaparro, the founder and the pastor of End Time Headlines. And we're going to be talking about something that I'm seeing happen right now uh, that I'm going to deal with. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, and it's Luke 21, because I know it's late. It's 938, so I want to get right to it. Again, thank you uh, for joining me in this segment. Again, my, my context, uh, our foundational context of Scripture here tonight is going to be Luke chapter 21. Uh, we're going to start around verse, let's, let's talk about verse 29, and we'll go down to verse 36. So again, Luke 21, 21. 29 through 36. Again, we're going to be talking about the three things that I believe is weighing people's hearts down that could actually uh, become a uh, a hindrance. And uh, and as you're going to see, this is this is something we really need to be guarding our heart with. The Bible says, uh, "Guard your heart with all diligence." For out of the issues, or for out of it comes the issues of life. So guard your heart. Uh, the Bible emphasizes guard your heart. Out of your heart comes this, and it comes that. And it says it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of your heart. So again, this is Luke 21. We'll start about verse 29. And, and Jesus speaking, he says, And then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree. And this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. And all the trees, when they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near so you also when you see these things happening and now what is he talking about these things he's talking about if you go up before Luke 21 29 he talks about these earthquakes in various places false prophets will arise there'll be pestilences there will be signs in the heavens there will be wars and rumors of wars and nations right rising against nations and kingdom against kingdoms and you'll see all these things he says so also when you see these things happening no that the kingdom of God is near. Uh, surely I say unto you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take a place. I believe, again, we can get into a theological debate on this, but I believe when he says this generation shall not pass, I believe it's the generation that sees not one or two of, the, of these events taking place, but when they're all coinciding together, when you're seeing earthquakes and, and volcanic eruptions and pestilences, and you're seeing wars and, and kingdom against kingdom and false prophets arising, and you're seeing the love of many growing cold and you're seeing uh, deception going rampant when you're seeing all these things he says this the generation that sees all these things will by no means pass away heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away here we go and this is where I wanted to get to verse 34 again this is Luke 21 34 this is the new King James but take heed in other words pay attention guard yourselves watch this lest your hearts be weighed down, okay, with carousing. Uh, the King James calls it uh, serpentine. It says, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. There's, he, there's these three things, guys, that I'm seeing rampant in the body of Christ that is gripping people, that's pulling people away from the truth, pulling away from the word, away from the house of God, away from the faith. And it's these three things that are weighing people's people down in their hearts. And it's carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of life. Now watch this. And that day come upon you unexpectedly. What day? The coming of the Lord. We got to keep it in context. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with these three things, and that day come upon you unexpectedly. Now watch this. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Okay, so listen, guys. I hate to break this to you, but I, the majority of of civilization the majority of the world is going to be snared why because their hearts are going to be weighed down with these three things but he's he's speaking to the church guys watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass 
and, and, and to stand before the Son of Man. Now watch what he, he's not talking to the unregenerated. He's not talking to the sinners. He's not talking to the heathen. He's talking to the born again, Bible believing, blood bought saints of God who've made a covenant with him that, uh, that have accepted him as the Lord and Savior, his disciples. Okay? He's saying, guys, Listen, I, I, I'm trying not to preach tonight. I really, I know people are saying preach it. I, I really trying to, I said this before I got in there. I said, I, I really need to, to wind this thing down and really, I want to teach tonight and not so much preach. But I want, because I really want, I don't want to get my mouth ahead of my, my uh, of what's in, in my heart and my spirit. So I want, I want this to come out as, um, as, um, as articulate as I can. Okay, there's going to, I believe that God is making a differential between the righteous and the unrighteous, upon the generated and the unregenerated. Come on, between those who serve him and those who don't serve him. Come on, between the Egyptians and the Israelites, if you would. There is coming a time, Malachi 3, he says that, uh, he said there will become a time when there will be a book and, and written in heaven. And he says this book of remembrance, he said, I'll have those names in my book and I will begin to separate them. He said, I'll spare them as a one who spares precious jewels and he says and then you will know that surely God makes a distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous between those who serve him and those he that don't so this is a warning tonight this is I believe a warning to those who will call themselves believers those who call themselves Christians those who call themselves disciples and followers of Christ my heart's desire tonight is that you not be weighed down, that I be not weighed down with these three things. Let me plow into these three things. Again, carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. The word carousing is very interesting. Um, it's a word meaning, uh, and this is very interesting. Let me pull, uh, according to, I have a Dakes Annotated Bible. Okay, and I looked up the word carousing, uh, and according to other definitions and other other terms, the word carousing means it means a st a state of stupor, almost like a hungover state, uh, because of the constant being uh, of, of constant drunkenness. It's a state of it's almost like uh, I don't have any other way of defining this, and I know this sounds bad, but listen, I didn't always serve God, but I'm gonna tell you, there's uh, if and, and I know a lot of my friends, uh, I wasn't one to get drunk a a, a lot or whatever, but it's a it, it it really to break this down, it is it, it's being in a state of stupor. Come on, after consuming mass amounts of alcohol you are desensitized you're uh you're disoriented uh you're walking around uh uh alebriated if you would and this is the way the world is today come on and this is how believers are because i'm talking to believers tonight and not so much the world we expect the world to be weighed down we expect the world to be in a in a state of carousing and drunkenness we 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 expect the world to be weighed down with the cares of life but the church we're seeing a time when the church has made themselves full, made themselves in a drunken stupor with the things of this world, okay? Now, let me break this down. I'm going to show you some other places in the Word that uses the term drunkenness, okay? I'm gonna, I know I'm going to make some people mad, mad tonight, but what's new, okay? Because again, if you want the truth, you'll get it here. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to pat you on the back and tell you everything's all right and send you out the door the same way uh, that you came in or you, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give you edification, exhortation, and if have to, you'll have to get rebuke as well. Okay. Romans 13, 13. Uh, this is Paul in the New Testament. This is what he says. He says, let us walk properly as in the day, not in rivalry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust and not in strife and envy. Again, that's Romans 13, 13 in the same connotation as Luke 21. He says, let us, the body, the, the disciples, the born again believer, let us walk properly, come on, as in the day, not in rivalry and in drunkenness, 
not in lewdness, not in lust, not in strife, and not in envy. Okay? Galatians 5.21. One of the fruits of the flesh. There's the fruits of the Spirit and there's fruits of the flesh. One of the fruits of the flesh, and according to Galatians 5.21, is drunkenness. He says, he says that the fruits of the flesh are this, envy, witchcraft, murder, drunkenness, rivalry, sodomy. And he goes through all these, a fornication, he, he lists all these things. And he says, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, again, that's Galatians 5.21. This is Isaiah 28, 7. Listen to this word, guys. This is the prophet speaking from the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. But they also have erred. And he's talking about the leadership. He's talking about God's people. He says, not, he's not talking about sinners. He's not talking about the unregenerated. He says, they have erred through wine and through intoxicating drink are out of the way. The priest... Come on, and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision and they stumble in judgment. Listen, I'm going to say something and it's going to make some people mad, but that's all right. I believe if you call yourself a true prophet of God or a prophetess, then you won't touch the stuff. You don't touch strong drink. Come on. You 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 have a Nazarite bow. You're like Samson. You have no business being even in the vineyard. You don't want to touch anything that's going to alter your state. Come on. You don't need weed. You don't need meth. You don't need intoxicating drink. You don't need to smoke something, snort something, inject something, or pop something. Come on, somebody. You can just open up the word and get in his presence and get a vision uh, and and get uh, and get a word from God and get a right now word. Okay, this is why I have trouble. Listen, Jesus said, "You shall know them by their fruits." Well, you know, they can give a word. Yeah, but uh, are they a drunkard? Well, you know, they, they nailed it every time. Yeah, but are, are, they, are, they in, uh, are they partaking of intoxicating drink? Are they erred in the way? Come on. Are they, are they, are they uh, what, is their, what is their home life like? Are, are, do they have a wrecked home life? Are they faithful to their husband? Are they faithful to their wife? Again, fruits outweigh, char uh, fruits and character outweigh the gifts any day of the week. So this in Isaiah the prophet says, he says, the priest and the prophet have committed a great horror, a great evil in the day because they've erred by partaking of intoxicating drink. They've erred in their way. They stumble in judgment and they err in vision. Golly, there's a lot of people that they've started out right but they got around the wrong people. They got around compromise. They got around sipping saints. Come on. They got around those who want a little toddy for the body. They got around those who didn't have a Nazarite vow. Those who weren't consecrated. Those who weren't willing to be sanctified. Those who weren't willing to take up their cross and deny their self and follow after him. Those who wanted to live just close enough to God but hold on to their fleshly carnal life. Okay, so when and when they they started out right, but but they begin to err. Come on, in their vision, they begin to err in their judgment. This is what happened uh, to to Solomon, guys. Solomon was the Bible said he was the wisest man uh, in the in the whole Bible. He was the wisest man in the land, but he got he got wrapped up with the, the come on seven hundred. Uh, uh, what was it? It was a thousand wives, basically. If you want to get down to the point he got a thousand wives and he his heart ended up erring into idolatry because he began to associate himself with all the idols of those that he became in covenant with and this is what this is talking about his heart erred in the way what are we talking about luke 21 he says he says uh Here's what he says. He says, take heed lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, carousing and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Here's Ezekiel, the prophet, chapter 23, verse 32. Yes, 700 wives and 300 concubines. Thus says the Lord God, you shall drink of your sister's cup, the deep and wide one. You shall be laughed to scorn and held in derision before it contains much, and he's talking about uh, 
He's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah here. And he's talking about, you'll drink of your sister's cup. And he talks about, uh, again, he's talking about the people of God who've erred from judgment, erred from truth, erred in the way. Because their hearts became weighed down. Their hearts began to be taken and captured by these things. Okay? And then he talks about the cares of life. Okay? Again, some of you say, well, you know, I'm not weighed down with carousing and I'm not a drunkard anymore. God delivered me from alcohol. He delivered me from smoking pot and doing drugs. He delivered me from all this. Yes, but here's one, guys, the cares of life, distractions. This is, this is the one that probably will deal with most of us over anything else. He says, beware lest your heart be weighed down with the cares of this life. Remember the, par or remember the story in the New Testament. I did a teaching on this a while back. There was three individuals that came to Jesus when uh, basically uh, there was a parable of, of the master of the house through a wedding. And he sent out his son. To give invitations and three people came. One of them said, let me be excused because I've got a piece of land. Another one says, let me be excused uh, because I've got a plow and I've got a, I've got a, or I've got a field and I've got to keep it. And the other one said, let me be excused because I've got a wife and I've got to keep it. So the, the work distracted them. Come on. Their, their home life distracted them and their marriage distracted them. Nothing wrong with these things. But again, when it begins to capture your heart. And it pulls you away from the house of God, away from the word, away from his presence, away from the truth. Then we've got a problem. OK, now here's let me bring it home. Matthew chapter. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 24. OK, listen to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it home here. But of the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven. But my father only, speaking of the coming of the Lord, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of before the flood, they were, watch this, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Wow, listen to that, guys. All three, the carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of life, all three of them are mentioned right there in the days of Noah and Lot. Again, in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken. The other left. Two will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken. The other left. Two women will be grinding at the... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Two. Yes, two... Uh, two men in the field, two women at the, grinding at the mill. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this. This is heavy, guys. Ready? But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief was going to come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Okay, stop. Let's back up. I told you I'm going to try to do a teaching here. Let's go back to Luke 21. What he say in verse 36? He says, watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape. Now, I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions from that, okay? Remember, as it were in the days of Noah and Lot, so shall it be in the return of the Son of Man, eating, drinking, marrying, giving to marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And he says, and then he turns right around and he says, there'll be two in the field, two at the mill, two in the bed, two here, two there, one be taken, one be left. And he says, watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, there's that word watch again, and not allowed his house to be broken into. I'm going to ask you tonight, has you, have you allowed your house to be broken into tonight? Come on. I'm not talking about your physical house, but I'm talking about, ye, do you know not your temples are the house of God, the temple of God? Have you allowed your temples to be broken into? Have you watched the gates of your temple? Have you watched the ear gate? Have you watched the eye gate? Have you watched your mouth gate? Have you watched your heart? Or, or have you let the thief break into? For you, you would have not allowed the thief to break into it. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now watch, I'm getting ready to get here. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master may rule over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Wow. 
And other, can I break this down? In other words, blessed is the pastors who are watching over the flock and preaching the coming of the Lord. Come on, who's preaching about the coming of the Lord anymore? When was the last time you heard a pastor get up and preach on end times? When was the, when was the last time you heard uh, any pastor get up and preach on sanctification, on holiness, on righteousness, on consecration? When was the last time you heard a preacher get up and preach repentance and not prayer? Prayer's good, but repentance has to plow. Repentance is the plow that breaks up the fallow ground. And then we pray and we water and then God gives the increase. So he says, blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him doing so. Surely I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. I want to talk to some pastor tonight, some prophet, some prophet, some teacher, some apostle, some Somebody, some Sunday school teacher, keep plowing, sir. Keep plowing, woman of God. Keep preaching. Keep teaching. Keep exhorting. Keep edifying. Keep discipling. Keep your hand to the plow. Be, be not weary in due weary in due season. For uh, and uh, be not weary in doing good. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. But here I've got a warning for you. Verse thirty four. Or 48, I'm sorry. But if that evil servant says in his heart, says in where? His heart. Beware, lest your hearts, come on, be weighed down. He says, beware. He says, but if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Come on. I'm weary about pastors and teachers and people of God, of God that say, the Lord's not coming back for a thousand years. Oh, the Lord's not coming back anytime soon. Oh, I'm not, I'm not looking for his return. Oh, this and that. Listen, he says, if that evil servant says in his heart, and in the King James, there's another translation in the book of Luke, and he says, beware lest that servant say in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Look at verse 49, guys. I'm in... This is Matthew 24, 49. So if you've got your Bible, you can go and double check what I'm telling you. It's right there. Verse 49. Watch these. Watch the. I want to show you the sequence of events. 48, he says, the, the evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. And as a direct result of his apathy, his complacency, his compromise in his heart, saying that the Lord is delaying his coming, the, the, the reaction of that is verse 49. And as a result, he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. Come on, I told you I was going to be in context. I'm right there, guys. The master of that servant will come on a day when that man is not looking for him and an hour that he's not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him and his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, come on, guys, that's heavy. Lord, let me. I don't know about you, but I pray that I'd never get to the point where I think that the Lord is not coming back at any minute. Come on. I remember the old timers used to preach like Jesus was coming back tonight. They used to say it like this. Prepare if, as if he's coming. Come on. Pray, pr prepare that he's coming tonight, but live or live like he's coming tonight, but prepare, watch this, as though he's he's going to be a while. In other words, occupy till he comes, but be ready, because we don't know. We don't we don't know the hour nor the day that he's coming. Okay, here's what Second Peter chapter three says. Okay, and then I'm done. Second Peter three three through five. Knowing this first, this is Peter talking. That scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust. If you've got your Bible open, I want you to highlight that right there. Underline it. You can underline this. Scoffers will come in the last days. Number two, they, they will be walking according to their own lust. In other words, come on, let me back up. Let's go back to Luke 21. Or uh, I'm sorry, let's go back to Matthew 24. In other words, they're going to say in, his heart, in their heart, the Lord's not coming. He's delaying. 
Uh, where's the promise of his coming? Come on, scoffing at the preaching of the coming of the Lord. Preaching at the, uh, scoffing at the rapture of the church. Come on, scoffing at preparing for his coming. And they say, watch this, they eat and they drink with drunkards. In other words, they're still drinking it up. They're still smoking it up. They're still at the bar. Come on, they're still at the club. They're still sleeping around. They're still practicing these things according to Galatians chapter 5. There's no motivation before God there's no true repentance and turning from their sins but instead they're walking according to their own lust and listen what they're saying walking according to their own lust saying watch this verse 4 and saying where's the promise of his coming come on are we not seeing this today guys so I'm, to, I'm telling you guys according to Luke 21 how have you ever wondered how a man or a woman of God can be on fire Preaching the Word of God, preaching truth, preaching the solid doctrine of the Word of God. Come on, on fire. There every time the doors are open. They're at every prayer meeting. They're in revival service. But all of a sudden, guys... They start coming up missing. All of a sudden, they don't pray like they used to. All of a sudden, they don't read the word like they used to. All of a sudden, they're, they're, you find them at a bar somewhere. You find them in a club somewhere. All of a sudden, you see them shacking up somewhere. All of a sudden, you see them committing adultery. All of a sudden, you see this. I'm going to tell you guys, it's because they've allowed these three things in some way, form, or fashion to take root into their heart, and it's weighed them down. It's carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. Life. And my friends, and if they don't get broken from this, if they don't get delivered from this, that day, the day of the Lord, the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will come upon them unexpectedly because he said it's going to come as a snare upon the whole earth. And he says, watch therefore and pray always that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things. Now listen, I know God, you guys are watching tonight by Periscope and, and by YouTube. So we're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters that may be watching this broadcast. And Lord, if they, if some way, form, or fashion, their hearts have been weighed down by the, the cares of this life, by drunkenness and carousing, maybe it's... Um, through some type of fleshly bondage. Maybe it's through the work has let them down. Stress has weighed them down. Anxiety has weighed them down. Just whatever it may be. Lord, whatever is turning our attention from you, whatever is pulling us from the secret place and taking us out from uh, from uh, from dwelling in your presence, if it's taking the fire out of our hearts, if it's drawing us out of our prayer life, drawing us out of the word, drawing us out of your presence, drawing us out of fellowship with other believers. Lord, you said uh, the the the. Uh, uh, that we're to, to even more so as the day approaches, we're not to forsake the, uh, the assembling of ourselves together with other believers. And even more so as we see the day approaches. And Lord, if there's any, any individual that's watching tonight and you have found yourself way down in your heart, Lord, I ask that they be delivered, set free. Lord, reveal to them whatever it is that's pulling their heart down. And Lord, help us to break free. Help us to set us free from these things. Lord, may we lay it down you said if any man desires to follow after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow after me lord we deny our flesh we crucify our flesh the bible says that we're to crucify or mortify the works of the flesh we're put to death those members of the body that cause us to sin put to death lust put to death fornication put to death drunkenness put to death these things in jesus name lord help us to put it on on the cross by grace by mercy by truth by your word and by faith Lord in Jesus name we repent of our sins and we ask Lord Jesus that you'd set our heart afire set it ablaze again and we turn and run after you in Jesus name God because we want to be watchful and be in prayer always. And Lord, I pray that my friends that are watching tonight and myself included, my family included, and their family included, Lord, may we be counted worthy to escape 
all these things that shall, that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we be not a scoffer saying, where is the promise of His coming? Walking according to our own lust. Lord, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus that we be a faithful servant. Lord, that is feeding the flock feeding the children in the Sunday school, feeding the church through, uh, through the, 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 the calling, Lord. The, the, you said, uh, Lord, in the, in the Word of God, in the parable, uh, you said to one you gave this talent, to another you gave this talent. Lord, let us be faithful <clears throat> over that talent that you gave us so that when you return, we have invested that talent to your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, guys. God bless you, man. Uh, thank you for joining me for this broadcast. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Um, I know that I've not been on here as much as I uh, usually am, and it's because I'm in a transitional. This is why I'm actually not even in my office. I'm in a transition uh, point right now. I'm moving from one state to another state. Many of you guys already know that. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you for your blessings, your prayers. Uh, and your support of this ministry. Uh, we uh, we have 10 days left in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, and then we are going to be transitioning to Indiana. We're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be moving out up north. Uh, and I'm praying heavily uh, for the next assignment that God has for us. Uh, I'm excited about this. God's already connected me with some individuals out there in that region. I'm excited about getting rooted and grounded again. Uh, and, and just seeing what God has in store. So you guys continue to pray for me. Uh, we'll be up in the Jeffersonville, Sellersburg region, that whole area right there, Clarksville, Sellersburg, uh, Jeffersonville. I'll be out in parts of Kentucky as well. So Kentucky and Indiana. We'll just cover the whole those two states right there. Uh, that's where my heart is, guys. I'm a Kentucky boy. I was born and raised in Kentucky, in Louisville, Kentucky. So I'm excited about this. So again, you guys keep me in prayer for a smooth transition and a move. And once we get out there and plant it and root it in, I'll give you guys an update on that. But I'll be back on here before that um, and probably do some more word and exhortation. No, we'll, I'll be on here on Periscope. Listen, guys, um, there's a possibility uh, that uh, this next phase of End Time Headlines uh, will uh, will be will be advancing quickly now that we're moving up there. So I'm excited about this, and we'll I'll let you know more about that when that time comes. So again, love you guys. God bless you. Thank you for the support. Remember to share this uh, via Periscope, and I pray that it recorded on YouTube. My last one, it didn't record it, so I couldn't I couldn't uh, save it to YouTube. I don't know what went on with that. Uh, so <clears throat> so we'll hope it gets recorded so you guys can watch on YouTube as well. So God bless, guys. See you soon.